I'd like to walk you through the correlation and causation practice project. And our first question here is to discuss whether we think the measurements have a correlation, causation, or neither. And we're measuring our height and our head height. We can see that height and head height and comparing those two. Now, our discussion in class, most people decided that yes, there is a correlation between these. So they said yes, and they described the correlation. Yes is not enough on this one, by the way. You need to explain why or how. So you think, yes, they're correlated because as your head grows, as your head grows, then your height will grow as well, or vice versa. And so that would be my answer for question number one. When we talked about a causation, most of the students said no, and I think I agree with that, that it's not necessarily that one is causing the other to change but that they are just changing together. So make sure you write your reason from that. No, and you are welcome to disagree with these. If you think that there is not a correlation, then you're welcome to say no here. And if you think there is causation, you're welcome to say yes, but just explain the reason why. We're gonna test it out later with our data. So that brings us to question number two. You are to create a scatter plot of the data for our measurements in class. Now we took these measurements, so I gave you a picture right here. So you can go ahead and write those on your table of values. It's gonna spill over into the second line. That's why I gave you two lines. And uh, then we're gonna go to GeoGebra and we are going to plug those in to GeoGebra. So you can see that I've done that right here where you've got these ordered pairs. So each one of these data points is going to be an ordered pair, that 166 and 25 right there. So you would write in GeoGebra as 166 comma 25 and close the parentheses and then that would put a point in there. When we get done with all of these data points, our graph looks like this. So we'll zoom in on that a little bit. And we are to analyze whether or not this agrees with what we wrote in question number one. So does it support your logic or does it refute or go against what you said in question number one? We said that there was a correlation and it looks to me like it indeed is true that we're going up and to the right, that as your height increases, your head height also will increase. Your head grows with it. And so I think this supports our reasoning very well. Uh, not all sets of data are this clear. We got a set of data from one of my other classes that this one is pretty difficult to see. I'm not quite sure if there is a correlation or not on this one because it's scattered up and down. You can see that the line of best fit is horizontal and that's typical of when there is no correlation for that to happen. So we're gonna to continue to work with our data from first period right here. And uh, our next task then on question number five would be to decide if we should have a line of best fit or not. So the correlation coefficient is going to help us with our decision. This correlation coefficient right here can be calculated using GeoGebra. So if we go back to our GeoGebra, you can see down at the bottom of the, my input bars right here, we've got our correlation coefficient of 0 0.806. We're gonna round that to the nearest thousandth. So our correlation coefficient we'll write down as 0 0.806. And if you remember from our class discussion, that gave us a strong correlation. Uh, this was on our scale from negative one to positive one. We said that at one it was perfect, and then it got weaker and weaker until we got around zero where there was no correlation. And we said if there's no correlation, then we don't draw a line of best fit. But this category from 0 0.7 to 1, we called it strong, and that meant that the data lined up pretty well. It wasn't in a perfectly straight line, but yes, we are going to draw a line of best fit. So for this question right here, our decision is yes, this is a strong correlation. So yes, we are going to draw a line of best fit, and you're going to explain to me be the reason why. So because and you tell me what it, we just discussed on strong. So we are going to draw a line of best fit. Now when we do that, we are going to get to question number six. It asks us to write the equation for our line of best fit. So we can see down here at the bottom, 
when we did our command for fit line, that gave us our equation right at the bottom. We'll round the slope to the nearest hundredth and the y-intercept to the nearest integer. So that would be y equals 0.23x plus Nope, that's not a plus, that's a minus right there. So we're gonna do minus, and we would round that to 17. So let's go ahead and copy this, and we'll take that over to our other question. So question number six, y equals 0.23x minus 17. All right, that brings us to question number seven. So question number seven asks us to interpret the slope and the y-intercept. So our slope right here is 0 0.23. So that's what we're gonna write. And our y-intercept is negative 17. So we're gonna write that. So when we get those two things right here, we get 0 0.23. And we're gonna write that as a fraction for the slope. And our y-intercept is negative 17 for the y-value and the x-value was zero. All right, so our slope is rise over run. So we're gonna go up and we're gonna to go to the right. So 0 0.23 is our rise and our run is one. And if we go back to our data, we can see that that relates to our measurements here. So our X variable is height and our Y variable is head height. So when we go up and down, that affects our Y variable, that's our head height. And when we go across, that's our run, That's our x, so it's gonna be our height. So when we have 0 0.23, that means that our head height just went up, or our head got taller by 0 0.23. And when we go to the right one, that means that our height increased by one, because that's our x. So put those together, and the meaning is that every time our height increases by one centimeter, our head height should also increase by 0 0.23 centimeters. And that's what you're going to write in question number seven. So we get down to question number seven and write that explanation here. Every time our height increases by one centimeter, our head height should increase by 0 0.23. That's the meaning of our slope. For our y-intercept, this zero and this negative 17 have a meaning. The zero was our x, and our x stood for our height. So zero means that we are zero centimeters tall. Zero centimeters tall. That 17 was the Y, which stood for our head height, so that would be negative 17 centimeter head height. Mix, clean that up a bit. Negative 17 centimeter head height. Now you're probably saying to yourself, that doesn't make sense, Mr. Fowers, and you are correct. It is impossible to be zero centimeters tall, and it's impossible for us to have a negative 17 centimeter head. So both of those do not make sense. We would write then that right here, what does the y-intercept tell us? This is what it should tell us, and that doesn't happen in real life. So you write down that description. All right, our next, we're going to use our equation to predict the head height of the math teacher. So our equation was y equals 0 0.23x minus 17. My height is 182 centimeters. Height is x, so that's gonna get plugged in for x. So on part b, you're gonna write the equation with it plugged in. y equals 0 0.23 times 182 minus 17. I'm plugging that into a calculator now, so 0 0.23 times 182 gives us 41.86, minus 17 would give us a total of 24.86. So 24.86 centimeters is the prediction. Now when it's strong, we expected it to be fairly accurate, but not perfect. Turns out that my actual head height is 24 centimeters. We measured that in class. And that's an error of 0.86 centimeters, so we were less than a centimeter off. That brings us to question number nine. Were you satisfied with your prediction? This is an opinion question. I'm pretty happy with it. I didn't expect it to be perfect, but uh, it was pretty close as expected with a strong correlation. Uh, it asks what factors could help us 
uh, become closer or make a better experiment. And I think the number one thing for me is to have more data. So there's our practice project. The regular project goes over the exact same things. So you'll end up doing the same types of activities, but with some new data. Thank you very much and good luck.